Hi, my name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and welcome to WebPixel Live. Uh, I'm joined today by my friend and fellow uh, presenter, uh, co-presenter, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Um, You'll be pleased to know it's cold down here today, so I'm jumping up. <laughs> you are. Yeah, you look very, look very warm. My central heating's broken down, so it's even colder up here. But <laughs> well, there you go. Um, so um, we um, produced an episode a while ago about dome ports um, and some of the questions that have come out of that have been to do with water contact optics um, so I thought we might spend an episode discussing the the lenses and op options that Alex and I have used um, um, over the past few years um, and um, discuss some of the principles behind water contact optics so so Alex maybe maybe I'll, I'll throw the question over to you Alex which one have you used what's what's oh, I'm one? glad it's that one I thought you were going to ask me to define water contact optics um, which uh, is the question sort of on everyone on the lips. So today we're going to talk about wide angle situations, yep. you know, related to dome ports. Um, one of the problems with dome ports is that they add this extra optical layer to your photographic system, and it's not a perfect optical layer, and it causes image qualities. The basic philosophy behind a water contact lens is it removes that layer. Yep. by making the front element of your system be designed to work in contact with water and therefore not have any dome port effects. Yep. The problem is, is that there's no strict definition in that, in that if someone does a bad job of making something work in water, but is at least intended to, they can still call their lens a water contact optic. So yep. yes, water contact optics have the potential to be the best underwater optics you can use, but unfortunately, it's because it's more of a marketing term than a technical term. And as a result, not everything that's called water contact is necessarily going to be better than a good dome port setup. But yes, the I best of them really are. The, the buyer be, beware, really, isn't it? It's, it water yeah. contact does, just means it's in contact with water. It, that doesn't um, imply any, any, any elements of quality necessarily. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's why we're sort of keen to talk about the ones that we've used because the ones we've used, we've chosen to use because they're good. Um, yeah. There are others out there which we haven't used because this year without shows and things, we've not had a chance to see as many manufacturers as usual. So yeah. haven't been able to get hands on things to test. So yeah. any manufacturers watching, if we're not talking about your products, you know, do get in touch with you know Adam at WetPixel um, and get them over and we'll very happily talk about them more if we've had yeah. the chance to try them. But I'm, I'm not one for reviewing stuff I've not, not used. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, and at the same think, time, I'm also not very keen to use things I don't fancy because I've only got so many dives. I, um, I also think we should we should also introduce an element of, of I'm going to I'm going to limit you, Alex. We're talking here about primarily wide angle optics, so yeah. so so um, and we're not going to get involved here with macro diopters and macro lenses because I think that's a whole other field. We have kind of covered it before. We can come back to it in the future if people are interested. So we're talking here specifically about wide angle. So. Alex, I'm hoping you're reaching for 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 the one oh. that's probably the great granddaddy of them all. Well, no, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, the great granddaddies are the Nikonos Five off. lenses, which I do have yeah. um, hidden away behind my green screen behind me, but <laughs> I didn't get one out for this um, yeah. because I don't use them these days. Yeah. But a lens I do use is is this, which is a designed by Nikon water contact fisheye lens, designed for the RS camera, um, the RS um, film. Um, aquatic SLR camera and this is a lens a fisheye lens designed to work purely underwater so this lens doesn't focus on land in yeah. fact every time anyone tries one for the first time they're like oh my lens doesn't work because they try and test it before the dive and they they realize that it, it's um, it doesn't focus on land um, and once you get underwater it does work I think I made that mistake when I when I had an RS back in the day for the first time trying one of these lenses so um, I was like oh my broken. god I've spent all this, all this money and it doesn't work um, <laughs> So this is a water contact lens. The advantage of this is without that dome port, you don't have the dome port effect, which in simple terms is what leads to the smudgy corners in your photos. Yep. So this lens allows you to shoot at much wider apertures and avoid that problem of, 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 of smudgy corners. It's possibly a little bit sharper across the frame. It has a little bit less chromatic aberration, but the main thing you see really is in that corner performance. And it's yep. that chasing of a good quality corner performance at middle and wider apertures that really is, is really what underwater photographers are hoping to get out of water contact lenses. And the the, the downside of using this, sorry, just to finish on it, is that I can't shoot split levels with it, which is one of the things that, you know, a lot of underwater photographers do. So, you know, there's still... 
So that's a 13 mil, um, and yeah. it is a fisheye. Yeah, um, this is 170 degrees. So it's very wide. Um, yeah, but um, the focal length is slightly misleading. People often, I mean, you know, yeah, think sure, yeah. 30 mil, oh, that must be super wide. It's just, it, it's related to the water contact. So it's it's quoted, it's really like a sort of an 18 or 19 mil fisheye. You yeah. would probably think about it. And so the obviously the original Nikonis RS lenses, all of them were designed to work with the Nikonis system. So in order to make them work with a modern SLR, you need to get them converted um, yes. And there are various people doing them, CCAM are one of them, um, but there are others that do it as well. And they will take a, 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 a Nikonis RS lens and convert it. And they actually will convert other ones apart from 30 mil that as well, if you have them. But, um, but yeah. Um, so, so I thought that the, the next place to go really would be um, the Nauticam WACP series. And WACP stands for Wide Angle Corrector Port. Um, mm -hmm. And this takes a somewhat different approach to the um, Nikona system in that you use your camera inside a housing with a lens. Um, and then the conversion port then corrects the image that's presented to the lens. Um, and um, Nauticam have two versions, WACP1 and WACP2. Now, Alex, you were involved in the design with with both or WACP1? Um, I would say more in the field testing and giving feedback, um, not, you know, it was the clever brains at Nauticam like Edward and, and his team who did the optical design. I did the underwater photography side of it, like this works, this could be better side of it, if mm. that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. Um, the, the less clever stuff. Um, they're pushing it around underwater. Yeah, um, the two lenses are a little bit different, um, but both of them, what, what Nauticam realized when designing them is that as well as correcting for that air-water interface, they could also stretch the lens wider. So yep. the original WACP-1 is designed to take a 28 mil lens and stretch it out into a 130 degree wide angle. That's yep. sort of in, you know, in, in, in a kind of a, a full frame focal length, that's something like a, a 10 mil wide angle. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's taking a 28 mil and stretching it really wide. The Very WACP2 wide. takes a, um, or you can actually use a, a 14, um, yeah, yeah 14, 14 mil. mil behind it, and that will yeah. stretch it out into 140 degrees. So yeah. it's a really, really wide lens. Um, yeah. But to do that, you need a big chunk of optical glass yeah. um, and actually multiple elements of it designed in a very clever way. And as a result, both are heavy. And expensive. I have to say, I think both are actually quite cheap for what they do. And I know they're both really expensive, but if you think how much glass is in them and the fact it's a bespoke design, you know, the likes of Nikon and Canon would charge you a hell of a lot more for what you're getting there. Yeah. Um, it would be it'd be a lot more. So I actually think for what they are, they're actually both quite reasonable, but they are very expensive. Um, so the WACP1 does have a little bit of barrel distortion. So, I mean, it's slightly fish IE if we want to. Yeah, when they stretch them, they both create it's, some barrel distortion. They because the the WACP2 stretches a bit less, it has much less. Yeah. Um, and most of the time underwater, that really isn't an issue. But if you want a very pointed rectilinear look, the WACP1 is not for you. I prefer of the two the WACP1. Yeah. Um, it's not as impressive as a WACP2, but I find it more usable. And it's certainly, I mean, I think we should compare it with the, the RS, though, where the 13 mil RS is very definitely a fisheye um, and the WACP is 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 not really a fisheye lens. It's it sort of sits somewhere in between the two. Uh, yeah, for me, they're, they're, they're two lenses that I would take on, on every trip. They're not in any way, you know, an either or. Yeah. One is a, you know, super yeah. wide fisheye and yeah. one starts quite a bit narrower and goes narrower still as a zoom lens that you yeah. can use. You know, one is a... You know, in, it's easiest in field of view. One is a 175 degrees corner to corner, and one is 130 degrees, and it can zoom into about 60 degrees. So yeah. they're very complementary lenses to have. And I do lots of trips with those two lenses and nothing else. So the next option that I thought we might talk about is a, is another Nauticam product, which is the MWL1, um, and this is quite a unique. Um, offering within the range. It, it's a fairly solid lump of glass. Um, mm -hmm. And this is designed to use a 60 mil macro lens on full frame, um, and it converts it to a, an 130 degree fisheye um, 
lens. So it takes the 60 mil. And the goal, I think the original goal behind this was certainly that you could mount this on a flip. You could have a 60 mil within your housing on a macro port um, and possibly also have another like a super macro lens as well. And the idea is you can literally switch switch from super macro to wide angle on 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 in, on an individual dive um, and particularly to, for 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 wide angle macro you know so you, you can you know you're on a, a muck dive in lembe you're shooting frogfish we're doing yeah. macro and then you want to get a wide angle view of the frogfish you can slide this down also if you're on a, a macro dive and you see an amazing wide angle opportunity you're also there and people have also found it very useful for blackwater diving where you're predominantly so. shooting 60 mil macro and yeah. then a big animal turns up like a blanket octopus, you flip, flip this thing down and you can shoot your big octopus without any, any problems. For black water, people like to mount some buoyancy on it so that it's not making the rig difficult to handle. It's just um, pretty heavy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it, it's proved yeah, very nice. I've, although I was actually involved in, in the process of, of, of its development, I've never actually shot it, strangely I've, enough. I, I have shot it, and, I, I, and in the Philippines, I, in the Philippines, I actually literally shot it as designed, um, and I had it with a 60 mil um, mounted onto my uh, onto my Seacam port with an adapter, um, and um, and I shot this, and then one dive, I went from um, um, shrimp uh, super macro to an enemy fish in a in a in a um, in a in an enemy um, on you know a single dive. So it's doable. Um, I, I'm not convinced about the um, lighting because it presents other issues with lighting, but um, optically it's fine. I think um, the other thing that you need to be aware of these is it doesn't work at really wide open apertures. It's really better at more closed apertures. Um, so so I think to be aware if you're shooting something like this, it's not it's not it's not the answer to everything. It's an answer, but not the answer to everything possibly. Um, right, that's MWL one. Um, and then we've got a range of or, or range of two lenses, which again um, are conversion lenses. Um, and this is WWL one. This one's got a, a buoyancy collar on it. Um, and these are very high performance wide angle conversion lenses, um, but primarily designed for um, crop sensor mirrorless and possibly for compact cameras. Um, yeah, yeah. for me, very much for, for Micro Four Thirds is the sweet spot for this lens. A lot of Micro Four Thirds users use it. You can actually use it on a Sony full frame system yeah. um, with a Sony 28 mil lens behind it. It's got a small yeah. enough front element that you can actually use this. It's not possible to use this on, and actually my desire to use this lens on a full frame Nikon is actually what drove the development of the WACP-1 because yeah. the WACP-1 is is basically trying to make that lens work on a full frame camera. Scale it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah. then the scaling up allows you to improve the quality and then making it, instead of being a wet lens that you can take on and off, it was easy, It was better to develop it as a dry lens. It's one less area of correction, and, and that's what drove it. I think that is a fantastic lens, the WWL1. Yeah. And, yeah, I think it's a real, for me, if I was a Micro Four Third shooter, um, I'd have that lens straight away. Um, I it's, think it's really great. It, it, the, so WWL1 is designed with a 28mm lens um and then there's now the ww which is a 14 mil which, on micro four thirds which 40 mil, yeah. 28 mil in full frame terms yeah yeah and then the wlc which is designed for a 24 mil um, and is actually a much more compact lump of glass as well um and that's yeah. really interesting it's a really interesting option um and um you know, again, would be equivalent what with a 40, uh, sorry, uh, t t with a 12 mil on um, on microphone. Yeah, but I think that's the W, um, the C is is designed. The C is for compacts, and it's yeah. designed for you know the better compacts to give you a relatively small and light, but very very high quality optic. So I've but used again, I've not I, shot it. I've used WWL1 with my Nikon uh, with my um, Sony RX100. Um, that's why I use it with. Um, and you know it, it produces great results. The, the RX100 has got a one-inch sensor, so you know it's got similar sort of size sensor to mm -hmm. to crop sensor. Although obviously, optically, it's not as good. Um, you have to be slightly careful with the zoom through on it, so you've got to got to be careful with the zoom through. But it works pretty well. Um, so I think um, Alex, what, what have we missed? Is there anything we've missed? Well, there are plenty of 
others out there on the market being um, run. I've not tried them all. I think this is one where people can get in the comments and said, I've tried this and it really works. Or I've tried this. And to be honest, I didn't see much difference from my dome port or, or whatever I'm normally using. The one, the other one I use is, um, which is a water contact lens, is is uh -huh. this this old Ivanov system, which we talked about before. And that, again, is doing the same thing of taking a land lens and converting it to work underwater without the normal issues you get with corner sharpness and that sort of thing with a with a um when when you're using a wide angle lens in water so yep. so that's another water contact i use but not it's not it's not commercially available in any any form but i, I personally i think the work that naughty cam have done in this area has been incredibly innovative and incredibly valuable to underwater photography as a whole i i think it's by far for me it's by far the most exciting thing that's happened to underwater technology for a long time you know it, you know for years and years it was oh we've made this housing slightly better or we've you know we've, we've given you a new version of the strobe which has you know got slightly more power and suddenly this has completely changed our possibilities underwater and for me it's it's the most exciting thing in underwater photography from a technology point of view from an equipment point of view for a long time I think we need to be slightly careful as well in the in the field of view, you know, 130 degree, whatever it may be. That's not the whole story. That's certainly part of the story. Um, but, you know, 130 degrees with nasty corners isn't really a usable image anyway. So, so um, you know, it's important not to kind of think, well, I need going to get the widest lens that I can um, simply because that will be the best. That's not necessarily the truth, the truth in this instance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to go for image quality and certainly the certainly the Nautican products seem to offer that. Um, yeah, and we've talked about the WACP specifically before, but I think the hard thing to get your head around with it is that actually it works best with a relatively simple lens behind it. And for yeah. years as a photographer, you learn that if you buy expensive lenses, your pictures look better. And yeah. what you need to understand with the WACP is that the effect of the boundary between the air and the water of your, your port system is so bad for image quality that actually taking a relatively simple lens and correcting it really well gives yep. you a much better optical system than putting an expensive lens behind a simple correction of a dome port. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so last of all, I was going to mention, obviously, that there are, there are lots of different brands of housing systems on the market um, and obviously different port attachment systems. Um, and so, for example, Alex, you're shooting Subal. So how do you attach a WACP onto your Subal housing, for example? Well, the WACP-1 isn't actually got a, a native Nauticam SLR mount port on the back anyway. They actually made it with a smaller port size. So even if you're a, a Nauticam SLR user, you have to use an adapter with it. Yep. So um, I use one made by Saga, and they just, instead of making a, a Nauticam to Nauticam adapter, um, they, I, I use a, a, a Nauticam to Subal adapter. It's, it's really not a big deal at all. Um, and it's, Saga made the measurements so they know exactly what length to make it. Uh, I'm the same. I, I use a Saga adapter, which allows me to use my C cam housings with the port. So I guess the point being that you know these optics are available to all brands, even though they're they're an Autocam brand. They're not only um, something that we you can have to use an Autocam, and and the same is true with other you know other brands of 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 uh, water contact lenses as well. Is that you can normally find an adapter that will allow you to add add it to your housing, whatever whatever brand you're using. Um, I think that's very helpful. It's a bit of a, bit of a rattle stop tour through uh, through water contact lenses, but um, worth doing. Um, so I know that um, the your the, the obviously water contact lens doesn't don't show up in the EXIF. So how would people find um, the images you've taken with water contact lenses on your website, Alex? Well, well you can search my website on lenses. Um, right. And so if you were interested in seeing pictures from the Nikonos RS lens, it's a 13 millimeter. So if you type in 13.0, it will bring up all the pictures taken with this lens. The 0, .0 just stops it pulling up pictures taken on the 13th day of the month, for example, yeah. or at yeah. one o'clock, you know, yeah, in yeah. the afternoon um, well, from, from the camera exif. So 13.0 yeah. worked pretty well. And because I always use a 28 to 70 behind the WACP1, um, you can type in 28.0 and that will show you all the WACP pictures. So they're actually quite easy to find if you know those two little sheets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look for the look for the lens exif that's used because obviously the ACP isn't a lens as such. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, 
And I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is um, Bunaken Oasis. Um, I would like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add, as I mentioned earlier, some, some examples or suggestions for water contact lenses that you've used successfully in the comment section. And drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.